Uh, Mr. Swalwell. Director, the plain definition of an insurrection is violent uprising against government. On January 6, an officer died. A couple days later, two died, death by suicide. Hundreds were injured that day. Uh, an eye was lost, fingers were lost. An officer suffered a heart attack. The counting of the Electoral College was suspended for approximately six hours. Members of Congress retreated to a secure location. Was January 6 an insurrection? Well, Congressman, I certainly understand uh, why you would describe it that way. In my role as FBI director, because that's a term that has legal meaning, I really have to be careful about using words like that and uh, not getting ahead of both prosecutors and judges uh, who have very strong opinions on what kind of public commentary, as you may remember from your past life, uh, I can engage in. So I certainly understand why you're asking the question, uh, given the circumstances both you described um, and a lot of the other details surrounding the attack. We are treating it uh, as a, an act of domestic terrorism and investigating it through our Joint Terrorism Task Force. Uh, and uh, we are, as you know, now uh, in the midst of bringing any number of conspiracy charges, uh, which are particularly serious. And, but this is a very ongoing investigation, and there's a lot more to come, and I would expect to see more charges, and uh, some of them may be more serious charges. Director, we're all grateful when we saw the FBI's SWAT team and its forensics team on the floor uh, after the attack. But before the attack, uh, you told the Intel Committee that you were looking for and through social media as a key part of investigations and that you would get tips from social media companies. Prior to January 6th, did the FBI receive any tips from social media companies about threats to the Capitol? Well, we've had so much information now, I'm, I'm reluctant to sort of answer uh, any question about the word any, <laughs> especially because we're now, you know, 500 arrests into an investigation and after the fact. Um, certainly we were aware of online chatter uh, about the potential for violence, but I'm not aware that we had any um, intelligence indicating that hundreds of individuals were going to storm the Capitol itself, um, to my knowledge. Do you believe the Bureau has the ability to monitor publicly available social media or open source uh, intelligence collection? Can you just repeat the question? I want to be sure I answer it. Yeah. Carefully. Do you have the authority and ability to monitor open source intelligence collection? So, for example, uh, any website, chat room, where you know consistently groups there are posting about threats, whether it's the Capitol, whether it's the law enforcement, do you have the ability and, and can you monitor open source? So uh, the answer to that, unfortunately, like so many things, is complicated. Uh, there are attorney general guidelines as implemented through the so-called DIAG that have been around for many, many years now that govern what we can and cannot do in this space, all of which are geared towards protecting the First Amendment. Um, with proper predication and an authorized purpose, there are a lot of things we can do on social media. But what we're not allowed to do is just sit and monitor social media and look at one person's posts, just looking to see if maybe something would happen just in case. That we're not allowed to do. Well, in the public realm, uh, we are learning that this attack on the Capitol was not a 500-year storm. In fact, as we speak right now, there's a count going on in Arizona related to the 2020 election where claims are being made that the outcome was fraudulent. The former president uh, is telling people uh, that he plans to be reinstated in August, and so you can see that uh, when you have those statements, that count, social media may be a place to look as far as intentions to try and reinstate the president. Knowing that a storm may be coming, uh, Director, what can we do uh, to make sure that an attack like that does not happen again? So uh, what we can do, uh, and we benefit very much from, is getting tips and leads about things that are on social media from everything from social media companies themselves uh, to members of the public. Uh, you often hear the expression that DHS coined of, if you see something, say something. And most people imagine when they hear that, you know, the unattended backpack in a Greyhound bus terminal or something. And obviously we want people to say something then too. Well, what we're trying to communicate is if you see something that looks like criminal activity and threat of violence, say something, 
including if you see something on social media, we need you to say something. And that's what our tip center uh, is, is partly there for. But you can contact law enforcement, state and local law enforcement. And has, sure has your judgment, the committee's, uh, the, you, the director, has your judgment changed that there was, no, there was not widespread fraud in the 2020 election? Uh, as former Attorney General Barr and former Acting Attorney General Rosen have both said, we just we looked, but we didn't see evidence uh, of fraud sufficient to change the outcome uh, of the presidential election. Thank you, Director. The gentleman's time has expired. Christopher Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there. And uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is. Because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is pushed to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like unlike I've ever seen in a case, uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. He made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? 
They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.